Welcome to my introduction to Substance Painter tutorial series. In this series, we're going to be going through how to paint an object in Substance Painter. So this is the introduction to Substance Painter. And then after this video, it will transition into an actual practical tutorial that follows my introduction to ZBrush series, where we take a sphere, sculpt it into a little egg creature, UV that creature, and then export it. So what we're going to be doing right now is just learning the basics of Substance Painter itself. To begin, we'll be going to the welcome screen, which if you closed it, you can go to help and click on welcome screen. You can also check or uncheck do not display again, and then click on start painting. This will open up a model with three different sections. And these sections can be found under texture set list. Uh, if texture set list is closed, you can go to window, views, texture set list, and that will reopen it. So what this does is it allows you to click on different parts of the model. So in this case, the head. So that if you wanted to paint on the head, you're painting on the head, but you cannot paint on the body when the head is selected or the base. Then if you click on body, you can paint on the body. If you click on base, you can paint on the base. So essentially what you're doing is you're selecting the object in question and that allows you to paint on it. Now, each object has its own UV. A UV is a flattened 2D image of that object where your textures will be stored. When you export textures, they're just stored as image files. So you can actually see this is the flattened version of this. If we go to the body, this is the flattened version of the body. And then if we go to the head, this is the flattened version of the head. Now to open this, you just hit F1. F2 gets you back to this view. F3 just takes you to this view. So F1, F2, F3. So we'll just be working in F2. So let's go to the layers section. This is very important. So when we were painting on this part of the model, we were actually painting on a layer. Uh, so if I toggle this on and off, it will disappear. And if I turn the opacity up and down, you can see that I can control the layer this way. And there's also blending modes. So there are a lot of different options with layers. There are also fill layers. So if I create a fill layer, it will create this solid color that has different properties. So these properties are very important. These are the default properties in Substance Painter. You have color, which is the actual color of the object. You have metal, which is how metallic it looks. You have roughness, which is how much light it reflects or absorbs. You have normal, uh, which is something you don't really use directly. It's, it's usually used by things that create uh, difference in height on the model. So it creates the illusion of depth without actually changing the model itself. And then of course you have height, which essentially also does that, but it does so in a different way. So usually when you're painting or working with the properties, you usually use these four. Now you don't always need to. So for example, if I turn metallic all the way up, now this looks like it's metallic. And to navigate, you hold down Alt and left click off the model. Actually, you can left click anywhere on the model. On ZBrush, you can't do that though. But in Substance Painter, if you just hold down Alt and left click in drag, you can rotate. And then if you just scroll at any time without holding in anything, you can zoom using scroll. And then if you hold down Alt and right click, you can also zoom. And then if you middle click, you can pan. So holding in middle click pans, left click rotates, right click zooms, and then scroll zooms. So continuing with the different properties of the material, roughness, let's turn metallic off, is how much light the material reflects. So essentially is how, how reflective a surface is, it re if it reflects or absorbs light. So zero roughness, it's reflecting everything, so it's essentially mirroring the environment back to it. Uh, one roughness, it reflects nothing and absorbs all the light. So you can see the difference here as I rotate. Uh, so you can rotate the light by holding in shift and right clicking. This is useful for when you're painting a part of the, the model that's dark or not illuminated and you need to just rotate the light. Or if you just want to look at the texture in different lighting situations. So let's go to a roughness of 0.5 so it has some roughness. Actually, let's go to like 0.2 ish. So around 0.2 so you can see the difference between the materials. Uh, and then we have height. Height is going to be hard to see from here. So what I'll do is I'll go to this layer 
I'll turn off everything. So you just click on these to turn them off. I'll go to height, I'll put it at minus one. And then I'll just paint with height so you can see what height does. So this is with negative height, so it appears to be sinking into the model. However, the actual surface of the model is not changed. It just visually appears to be changed. And then if we go to positive height, it has the opposite effect where it appears to push the model out. So as light hits it, this appears to be in more and this appears to be out more. So you can use height to great effect to customize the appearance of your model, to add more details that look nice as light hits the model. So that's the difference between height, roughness, metallic, and color. And then normal has a similar effect, but this is more advanced and you don't usually paint normal. Usually you bake normals and usually you use smart materials that use normals, but that is a topic for another video. So the next thing I wanna talk about are masks. So what a mask does is it allows you to use a fill color and then perform an operation or to show parts of that fill color. So let's say we have two fill colors. We have the first one, we have the second one. You can double click to rename. So let's go to our fill color. Let's make this red. So right now the first fill color is, is being overlapped by the second one. But if we right click it and add a black mask, you can see that now the, the second fill color is not seen at all. If you click on the black mask and if you go to the brush and the grayscale is set to one, you can paint that fill color in. So now you have a fill layer that you can paint. So if you wanna dynamically paint some details using this color, you can do that. And the big upside of this black mask is that the mask itself can be changed as well as the fill color itself. So we can make this some crazy color. We can make this metallic now. So now only the fill is metallic and the rest of it is not. And we can also turn the roughness off. So it's like kind of this weird metallic roughness situation and all of that is editable. So using masks with fill layers is a really good idea. And you can also see height. So like if we add height, you can add height that way using a fill so that there's like some surface difference for the fill or for the height to actually show through. Uh, that's using a black mask. You can invert a mask by right clicking invert mask and it will just invert the mask. Uh, similarly, if we delete this mask, remove mask, right click, and then we right click and add a white mask uh, essentially will just be 100% visible and then we can paint with black and you can adjust this down here. So if I paint with black, now it's adding, in this case, or I'm sorry, it's subtracting from the fill. So that's the basics of masks with the white versus black mask, as well as using fills with different properties for different results. So to wrap up this introduction video, we're just gonna go through the shelf. So I'm going to go to window views shelf so the shelf has a lot in it you can change your brush under shelf so you just click on brushes and you can add a different alpha to your brush so now when i paint with the brush it looks completely differently or it looks completely different uh, it's more organic with this brush so there's different brushes it's good to experiment to see which brushes you like also note that you can adjust the settings so like if you want the brush to be less opaque, you can see over here, it's adjusting it. So then when I go to paint, it's more subtle. So that's a, the overall opacity. Then there's flow, which notice the difference between flow and opacity, stroke opacity. So flow actually adjusts the shapes so that like the way that the shape is painted on dynamically is different. Whereas opacity will take the entire shape and then reduce the strength of it. So it's still the same shape, it's just not as, as much um, intensity, whereas the flow actually adjusts the properties of how the paint gets painted on. So useful to know both of those. Uh, these are pen pressure, if you're wondering what these are. So this is with, I'm using a Wacom tablet. This is with both of those settings, it's like 100%. If you turn on both of these, they will now be sensitive to pen pressure. So I can make finer strokes and you know make more dynamic results instead of it just being 100% brush size at all times like this. So if you want pen pressure, and then if you want less opacity, you can get a more refined results doing that. So you can see here, 
This is with me doing multiple strokes, kind of like adding these details in a little bit more organically. You can also increase and decrease the brush size with the square brackets. Very useful for while you're using the stylus. Um, so that's brushes. The other main thing I want to go over is materials. I'll go over smart materials and smart masks in their own video. Uh, there's more to them than that, like than just like a quick one minute thing. So like, let's say you want to add like a basic material to this guy. You can do that just by dragging it over and then it will get you a basic result. So, you know, aluminum pure in this case. Uh, let's say we want to drag in something different like human skin. Then turn off that one, these. So now this looks more like skin. But that's a basic material, it's just kind of getting you started. And then of course you could add a new layer. Let's say you wanted to paint onto this. So you could start adding in details. So you'd probably want to select a more organic brush. So brushes, let's do uh, like this cement brush. Now we're not painting cement, but the brush is more, more organic. So it gets you better results when painting on something that looks like skin. Let's increase that a little bit. So now we kind of have a brush that looks more organic while we're painting on skin. So yeah, that's the basics of Substance Painter. Um, I'll go over exporting in a separate video. I'm going to go through an entire project, uh, but I'm going to go over baking, exporting, ref like hand painting things, using smart materials, uh, a lot more than just in this basic introductory video. Uh, definitely like and subscribe if you enjoyed this or found this useful. Drop a comment, let me know what you think, and I'll see you in the next Substance Painter Guide.